Yes, the Bond Arms Derringer. What a great little pistol. Two shot. This is a double barrel shotgun. You know, you fire two blasts from this thing and it scares anything off, right? That's what some people say. But you know what's even better? All guns have clips, don't they? Well, I couldn't find a clip that would hold more rounds for my double barrel shotgun to make it easier to reload. So I made one. This is such an ingenious clip. So basically what you do with this, you break open the barrel and then you, ah, man, that's a bummer. I thought all guns had clips. You know, those things that go in and help you put rounds in and make it fire 200 rounds a second in fully semi-automatic double action, double barrel fire. What the heck? I've been lied to and duped. Dang it. Welcome to another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. I told you guys I was going to come back at you really soon once I got my new grips installed on my Bond Arms Derringer. So, as many of you recall, this particular Derringer, and for posterity's sake, it is 100% clean. You can see down the barrels. See my hand? There's nothing in there. Uh, I'm actually going to move my live ammo away so I don't have it near the gun when I'm doing this video. This is a Bond Arms Derringer. This is a rough and rowdy and 45 Long Colt and 410 uh, shotgun shells. And when I purchased this, it came with these little rubber grips. So this is the factory grip that came on it. And they're pretty comfortable. The only problem was they're really small. So when you're trying to shoot this, you can't even really get a full grip on the gun. Your bottom two fingers hang off of it. And it was a little bit much to shoot. So I had heard people say that if you put these extended grips on here, it gives you a lot more purchase. Now I can fit three fingers on there correctly, and you got your thumb for actuating the hammer and your trigger finger for actuating the trigger, obviously. It does fill up my hand a lot more. You can tell it's a lot thicker. So when I grip this thing, it's actually filling up the entire palm of my hand. Now these I purchased off of eBay. I think it was a company called PMG Grips. And I'm gonna put the card from eBay right in here so you can see what the auction looked like. And these were very simple to install. You basically take out the factory screw these come with their own screw. That's the correct length for this. Take out the factory screw, take off the original grips, set these on there and get them positioned correctly so that they fit the frame with the right curve. Otherwise, you can actually twist these a little bit back and forth if the grip's not completely tight, which right now my grip's not completely tight. So Make sure they're set up correctly on the gun. You have one screw that goes through and you just tighten it up until it's nice and snug. And now I have a much better purchase on this. I can actually fill my entire palm up with this particular grip. And it has a really nice pattern on it. I think they call this gentleman scrolling. So it has like these nice, they're not really Florida Lees, but it has nice checkering on it and it has these nice scroll work patterns on here. I believe it's laminated rosewood or laminated hardwood, I'll have to look again. But very nice grips. So I'm not exactly sure when I'm gonna be able to take this back out and shoot it. Um, my range is closed to the public during the week throughout the entire month of uh, December for hunting season. So I can only go there on Sundays and usually Sundays are pretty busy. So I'm hoping to get several of these short little videos um, with different product reviews and things like that in the interim when I'm not actually able to get out to the range and shoot. Now I have been amassing some 12 gauge ammo for the Boss 25. So I sourced a whole bunch of um, some slugs, a whole bunch of additional buckshot, and some more birdshot and different brands that I wanna try. Um, but realistically, I just wanted to do a quick little review on this. So far, I'm very impressed with this. And again, gun is clear, so it's safe for me to handle it right now. Uh, I'm very impressed with these. Like I said, they completely fill up the palm of my hand now. My pinky finger ends up in this little notch down here. It's, it's perfectly fit to my hand, and I can get a much better grip on this. Now, 
Again, I'm, I don't really plan on conceal carrying this, but if I did, it would be a little bit harder to conceal carry now because it's thicker and the grip is longer. So I suppose if you carried this uh, on a, um, what do they call that, a cross draw holster and you put it on your left hip, I mean, I'm right-handed, so if I put it on my left hip and had it facing towards the back of me, that would probably be plenty fine for this thing. I know a lot of people have cross draw holsters for these because they're great for carrying when you're driving with a cross draw holster. Um, but this particular one, like I said, now it fits my hand really well. Uh, I was a little bit hesitant to keep this actually. After the first time I shot it, I really did not enjoy shooting it the first time. And I was putting some slugs through it, some buckshot and some regular bird shot. But after I figured, you know, you've got to get a firmer hold on this thing. I was actually not that um, opposed to shooting it after that. I mean, again, the sights on this, very minimal. It has a small U-notch, and actually both of the sights are machined into the barrel. So no matter what, if you change a barrel, the sights are always going to be dead on because it's on the barrel. So a little U-notch sight in the rear, this big ramp sight in the front. Um, but realistically, it shoots pretty well. I was able to hit a target with slugs up to 50 yards, and I could probably go a little bit further than that if I really wanted to. It's supposed to be an up-close and personal gun. Uh, if you're shooting buckshot or birdshot, it definitely would be. But in this particular gun, shooting slugs, I was able to hit targets out to 50 yards. Um, so it's a fun little gun. And now, you know, I decided to keep it, so I've invested in these, uh, these nice grips. And I'm actually debating getting another barrel for this. Because while the 410 and 45 long Colt is a great barrel, and I really wanted this for the 410, so I could have a quote-unquote um, same caliber firearm as my 410 shotguns, I really still want to get like a Smith & Wesson Governor or a Taurus Judge. Because I've always wanted a shot shell revolver, and those are the most prominent ones that you can get. But this was an interim. This is much less expensive than a Governor or a Taurus Judge. So for me, this was something I could afford right now that is fun to shoot. And, uh, but the nice thing about it is you buy the frame, the frame is serialized. And once you have the frame, you can basically take this one screw out and replace the barrel with any other barrel. So this is a 410 45 long Colt barrel. I was actually thinking about purchasing either a nine millimeter or a 45 ACP or a 38 Special 357 Magnum barrel, because I think this would just be a lot more fun with a pistol caliber. Uh, you know, 9mm or 38 Special and a little Derringer like this would be really cool. So those barrels you can typically find on eBay and a few other places online. They're between like $165 and $180 per barrel, and you can basically change whatever caliber you want just by changing that pin. I wish they made this in a... 22 long rifle or 22 probably a 22 magnum barrel that would be really cool but i think if they make these in a 22 magnum it's a different frame because the firing pins have to be um either the firing pins have to be in a different location or the bore of the barrels would have to be offset for the standard firing pins to hit so i don't know i haven't really looked into it that far so let me know what you guys think do you think I should get another barrel for this? And if you do, what should I get? 9mm, 45 ACP, 357 Magnum. Just let me know in the comments what you think. If you've shot these in any other calibers, which one do you prefer and why? I'm still considering getting another barrel. I just haven't quite figured out which one. I think 9mm would be great with maybe like 124 grain um, flat nose 9mm or... If I got a 357 Magnum barrel, carry like 158 grain um, plus P38 special hollow point in this thing or something like that. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Cranky Gun Reviews. Have a great weekend. God bless America. Remember to support your two-way rights.